Kapagtuo Usa ka tingog Usa ka katawhan Cebu Catholic Television Network Network Brothers and sisters, faith without action is dead. Ang pagtuo nga diliubanan o maayong buhat patay. Faith and action must always be together. They cannot be separated. These two are twins. One cannot live without the other because God has joined them together. In James 2.24 it says, You see, Then, that it is by our action that we are put right with God and not by our faith alone. And even in verse 26, it says, So then, as the body without spirit is dead, also faith without action is dead. Therefore, brothers and sisters, faith without action is dead. Mayong huwibis ka na itong tanan ng kaigsunan. Nga nasab kita, hinihing itong paboritong programang Faith in Action. Tingali, masurprise mo sa among special guests. Karun, no? Hini among guests, special ka ini. No, si Sister Malo na lang ang mga tag ka ninyo uh, katinawan. May buntag tayo, may buntag sa viewers sa uh... Faith in action. Oh, hapit ko na kalimut sa. <laughs> hapit ko na kailusip. <laughs> Straight tayo eh, no? Good morning. Onya, happy viewing sa mga nagatang sa tong programa live taro, no? Onya, kung asa mga nasud gikan, kamo na lang yun huna huna ugdiin minanuka drone per in short na rin bitaw midresibo sa tong studio. It's just that ang ato mga bisita karong buntaga mga espesyal matud pang tatay kung kauntag batchoy. Special lahi na, no? Pero kanisla special yun ka ini kay lahi po ni ang ilang hihatud na to ng mga sugilanon karong buntaga. So, sa mas na anda, na to silang tagagigayon nga mo pa ila-ila sa ilahang kaugalingon. Good morning! Good morning! Good morning, my viewers. Good morning, good morning, tatay. Good morning, mom. And good morning ang mga viewers. Good Sige, ipa-ila-ila yung mga kaugalingon. Okay. Um... My name is Lawrence, uh, Reverend Father Lawrence Orazulume from Nigeria. And um, you can add MD. <laughs> Why MD? I'm also, I'm also a doctor. Oh, me, I'm also MD, Murag Doctor. <laughs> 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 oh, welcome to Faith in Action. Thank you. Okay, next, mm. Kinsa Mansunod. Ako si Reverend Father Gabriel Amobi, Paga Nigeria. Thank you. Oh, tingay magtuo mo nga artista ni sa Wakanda Forever at ang bisita. <laughs> <laughs> Dili ni mga artista sa Black Panther itong bisita rong buntaga. Mga pari ni sila. Mm. Oh, so, ato ni silang sugda na nagpangutan na tayo. Nga nung naam sila di rin nga, nga kalayo sa Nigeria's Pilipinas, di ba? Well, Idalaman ng yun sila ni itong iksuon, no? Sa, uh, iksuon yun nga very close, no? Brother Eric Spina. We are good friend of Brother Eric, no? Hmm. So, mo na nga. Nung dagi ubanan yun di rin, no? Um, no? So, mo na. Ato ni silang pangutan na, no? Sige. Kung, nga no man ni silang, okay. kung siya may nakahinungdan yun. Abutsla di rin, no? Ang kining vocation niya. Mumi ilang ipili. Yes. Ang pagkapari, no? Ya ka nang, ba okay ba nga ang Nigeria, Nigerian language, anong Nigerian, Nigerian language, o kaning bisaya, uh -huh. maumaura di ay ke, kumaura ng bisaya. <laughs> No? <laughs> Tell me, what, what is your national language? Oh, what's the national language of Nigeria? In Nigeria, we have like more than, I would say more than 200 languages. Mm. Uh, be, because Nigeria is a coming together of many tribes. Ah. So, the, nationally, on the national level, we speak English. 
but the three major tribes with the three major languages in Nigeria is Igbo, we are from Igbo, then Awosa, then Yoruba. Mm. Mm. The three main so main. much like the Philippines, many different languages yes, in yes, one country, yes, no? One. Mm. But for unity, we use English because English. we are colonized oh, okay. by, by United Kingdom. Mm. Mm. Ah, so you're, we're under UK colony. Mm. Okay. Uh, how far, man? Unsa kalayo? Just tell me if di na mo ka understand sa kong gasulti, ha? Unsa man kalayo ang Nigeria o Philippines kung mo travel ka? Like um, when you fly, how, how long is the like flight? When we were coming here, we actually came here 2015. So when we were coming here, it took us more or less 18 hours. 18 hours flight. And we only have one stopover in Doha. Mm. Uh, we didn't even spend more than one hour, you know, waiting for a collecting flight. Mm. So more or less 18 hours. Pero, muntah na ko ni Moon, so mali. Nakibaw ka ba kung siya ay national language sa Turkey? Kuya, wala na ko na. Unsa man, unsa man tayo? Kaya, bulo ko na lang nung di ba yan ang Turkey? Pabu mo na tayo. In English, Turkey. Sakto, sakto. Sige, so nga naman nga naabot man mo din his Pilipinas. Well, we actually, actually before, um, I didn't know that there is a place called Philippines before. Oh. Really, you know, <laughs> I didn't know. And, um, you know, when you're a priest, um, you are more or less like a soldier. So you don't, you have submitted your will to mm -hmm. the bishop. Mm -hmm. So you do what the bishop asks you to do, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were ordained, I was ordained a priest in 2014. And I served in tribunal, marriage tribunal. In fact, I was still serving the marriage tribunal when the bishop called me and um, asked me and told me that you'd be going to the Philippines you know, to study mm. medicine. Mm. So that was when I started researching that is Philippines. I picked interest in the Philippines. So I began watching Filipino movies right from Nigeria. Ah, <laughs> Just okay. to pick to learn. language. Yeah, mm. I watched this movie called Amaya, you know? <laughs> okay. Amaya, you know. I think it was it's by, by, by re 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 Yeah, it's like, oh. um, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was really interesting. I liked. I picked interest, you know. So that was how I come. I, you know, I came to know Philippines mm. until we started preparing. Until um, 2015, around September, we entered flight and I saw ourselves here. You, know, so you two were together the whole time, or no? Yes, we were together, mm. working together. So we were sent here primarily to study medicine, to become doctors, although but we are you're priests. now doctor now. Yeah, we graduated na. So mm. Yeah, doctors na. Doctors yeah, na. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Did you know, so. in my school? I was a good doc. a good doctor's university. Oh. Yeah, he can get stuff for himself. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So, you're a good doctor? What's your yeah. specialization? Well, we just graduated and mm. um, I will be, we will go back then take, because we will be practicing in Nigeria, so we will go back take board exam, mm. then pick up. I'm interested in um, like um, doing IM and being nephro about kidney because uh, most of our people mm. are dying of kidney problem. But mm. there is one recent artist we lost, a singer, you know, we lost him, you know, due to kidney problem, kidney disease. So. Mm -hmm. And I believe, um, I believe um, that's why I picked interest. So let me, you know, I wanted to do like surgery, then do specialize in kidney transplant. But the problem we have in Nigeria is to get donors. Mm -hmm. You know, donors uh -huh. are very rarely uh, suited. So most Nigerians fly abroad. They go to donors India. are very. Uh, they, Lisud. It, yeah, they, they, have, <laughs> they have this, Lisud this aura. This, Lisud pangita. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this fear. Uh, you know, to give the... Um, ah, so, they are going to give the kidney? Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. They don't, they, that's why most politicians, and most worthy people, they fly abroad. Hmm. You know, those who can afford... For the transplant. Yeah, for the transplant. So, it's not going to be Yeah, so that's why I, I initially picked interest in that, but when I noticed that there would be a problem, that I would become a doctor that no, no patient, you know, so I decided to channel it to 
uh, maybe doing nephro, do IM, then mm. do nephro, mm. and like dialysis and yes. uh, counseling. Or, uh, mm. so, so, kung ikaw, doctor ka, ni graduate ka si doctor, si Father Gabriel, di in man sa admission ni Squila? I, I studied in Cebu Institute of Medicine. Mm. 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 To my, my process, into medicine um, has always surprised me um, because um, after my ordination I was ordained in 2012 so I spent one year in the parish working you no know, fully as as the vicar then after that I was made the manager of one of our high school so I thought I would like for such positions it's like six years seven years so I thought I would really spend time but on my second year in that school in 2015, so mm. the bishop called us to study medicine, you know, and in obedience to God's will, mm. to the promptings, promptings of the Spirit, and also to our bishop, so we agreed. Actually, initially, I thought it, it was going to be in Nigeria. Mm. I was already preparing. I was already. I tried to take the the entrance exam to to universities. We call it JAM, J A M B JAM. I was already preparing for the JAM. I thought I would go so until I was informed it's not going to be in Nigeria. It's going to be in the Philippines. Mm. I said, what like? Totally yeah. outside. Why, I don't, why, why, uh, yes, why? I have no brother here. I have no relative, mm. not even a friend. Mm. No, but but we thank God. We thank God that our bishop, I would say, he really made the the right decision. Looking back now from a hindsight, because uh, I believe we have you no know, Philippines have good medical schools. You no, know, and I believe that having the opportunity to train in Cebu was, is, is what I will not easily forget. And how much more also the Archbishop, when we came, maybe we'll still touch on that, the Archbishop of Cebu, Archbishop Palma, very, a man with a very large and generous heart, you know, who fully, heartily welcomed us, you no, know, you no, know, and made, made the environment really suitable for that we don't feel, feel so much far from home, you know? Mm. So um, we, we, will, we will ever remain grateful to him for, for his warmth, for his hospitality, for his understanding, you know, and everything. Yes, but, but even with a community that welcomed you here wholeheartedly, I know it's never easy to be away from from home, yeah, exactly. You know, the bar where family, friends, familiar, everything from the food to the places. So, <laughs> exactly. how did you adjust? Unsa man in your hong, in your life for the first say first six months when you arrived in the Philippines? Um, if I, um, it was first of all when we arrived we had to deal with jet lag mm. you know <laughs> yes. and I, actually i would say for me that was my first time of traveling outside mm. in nigeria you know so the jet lag for the 18 hours flight and then the subsequent days i really have to look around the the city you know cebu is really beautiful and then with time we started adjusting no, to new language, new people, <laughs> new food, new food. <laughs> in particular, I may like to mention maybe rice. No, about nice. rice. In Nigeria, we have rice, and our rice is lami. No, <laughs> we <laughs> we enjoy it. And rice is very nice. No, 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 lami. no. Yeah, <laughs> lami food. But lami food. <laughs> yeah, but the point I want to mention is that our rice. First of all, we have a special way of preparing oh, it um, in mm. nigeria if you can search in the internet we have what we call jollof rice it's a special delicacy in nigeria the way we prepare our rice garnish it with condiments with fried plantain and fish like that but mm. but but not just that we usually eat rice let's say on sundays in fact i believe in every family on sunday afternoon is rice mm. like we eat rice on occasions like on uh, birthday uh, yeah special, special like yeah so coming here 
in the Philippines, like, only rice. Three, yeah, only, yeah, only yeah. like morning. So the next morning after our arrival, the next morning rice we ate rice. Sun. In the afternoon we ate rice. Then at night we ate rice again. So it also we had to adjust gradually. Yeah. Uh, but but you can see we already adjusted. And then after eating yeah, rice, already. you eat rice. No, said wood wood rice like a rice cake. Oh. So so now I'm already we rice. Some, uh, oh. We're mm -hmm. ready, right? They will look for rice. They will look yes, for rice. Yes, yeah, like yes. when we travel abroad, we yes. my rice. <laughs> mm -hmm. But now, now I enjoy rice. So mm -hmm. on your rice. regular weekdays, so on some day yung kaunon kung kung rice ninyo Sundays ra. Not only on Sundays. Let's say let's say three or four times in a week. Mm. Let's say usually. Let's say on Sundays, yes, then maybe on Tuesdays and Thursdays like that. But so, could you mag rice? On some yung kaunon. Nigeria has a lot of food. We oh. have the one of our staple food is cassava. I ah, think we okay. will. The, the, mm, mm, so, but we have a way of processing it, mm. and then it will be pound. It will be made into a mash, just like a mash potato. Mm. You can, you can go to the internet. You see what is called fufu. Fufu is is mm, so it's like a mash, a whitish mash potato which mm. we have we used to eat with different kinds of dishes ah, also so more rice yes. alternative yes and we also have yam okay. here here i think there's yam here yes mm, a bigger ube ube, oh, ube. Mm. Uh, uh, so we <laughs> stay we we also grind it ah, some we pound it that. yes pero unsa man inyong kamungduha unsa man yung pinaka paborito nga na pagkaon sa Cebu for me, chicken curry. Manok. <laughs> <laughs> like chicken Ikaw, curry. Father. Well, um, I have this special likeness for lechon. Oh. <laughs> lechon. Because, no, yeah, yeah, simply because that even um, Adito Eric was advising me to try to see if I can introduce that in Nigeria. Mm. Uh, but you know, the problem is that Nigeria is um, um, more or less predominantly some part where Muslim, some part we are Christians, and the Muslims don't eat um, yeah. um, don't eat yeah, um, um, yeah. pork. Yeah, mm. and the Christians uh, eat more of beef. But there are some people eat less, eat pork, you ah, know. So but not not, so not like here, you know. <laughs> you can begin it. Yeah. Mm. Not much people will patronize, you know. Yeah. Mm. So. What's the uh, major religion there in uh, Nigeria? Um, the major religion in Nigeria, you can say we have um. The, there are two major religions, Muslim and Christianity. But if you come to that Christianity, we have um, Latin, Latin, like Pentecostals, oh. you know, Catholics, Anglican, Presbyterian. Like we have more than 1,000 different uh, Christian denominations in Nigeria. More than 1,000, you know, mm -hmm. Christian denominations. But Muslims are only one. And Muslims are. A greater percentage, like up to forty percent, uh, maybe Christian sixty. But in that Christian, like, 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 like yeah. how is the Catholic the uh, percentage of the? Uh, the Catholic will be like more or less 30 30 percent. Yeah, more or less yeah. thirty percent because uh, it's like the Catholics are before Catholics used to be more in number, like up to fifties. But all these Pentecostals, once they begin, their target is Catholic. They will just go to Catholic Church and get members. Get yeah, and so that's why you know if a, a big lesion, if this person cuts from the hand, this person will cut from. So the lesion will be <laughs> will be reducing in size. Mm -hmm. You know, so the Catholics used to be like 50, 60 percent, and you know most the problem where uh, what made many people to be joining them because of problem in the family, and they 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 will come to prefer maybe false solution to them. You know, many people are looking for marriage, looking for husband, looking for wife, looking for, you know, job. So all those Pentecostal pastors will come and promise them, you know, do miracle. Uh, so yeah, yeah, promises. Do, yeah okay. do, maybe some of them will go and do fake miracle. And uh, that is one of the major problems we are having now in um, Nigeria. Nigerian Christian mm -hmm. side, you know. And uh, most pastors, you can you must, you must have seen them on television, most of them drive private jets, you know. Like we have up to five to six pastors in Nigeria driving private jets. Private jets? Private jets, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's what sounds they get familiar. from <laughs> that's what they yeah. get from these people. Money, money. Yeah. Mm. And, um, mm. 
Yeah, hardly. It's just money, money. Yeah, they, they don't they don't open that church to get people to be converted. They just mm -hmm. to promise them uh, if you come, if you maybe if you give me money, I will pray for you. Miracle will happen, something like that. You know. You so. know, I'm very challenged to go there. <laughs> yeah. I go around mm -hmm. without asking money, not a single centavo. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't count the cost of my serving the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For my 28 years of serving the Lord, not a single centavo that I ask from the people. Mm -hmm. I spend for them. Yeah. Oh, that is fine. Yeah, you know, if you come, you can stay in, in Nigeria. Any mm -hmm. pastor opening church, the primary motive is money. Money. We will go. We will invite you. We will invite you. When I go, I always bring with me. At least five, six people because I have my music, my mm -hmm. singer. Wow, that would be I nice. also, yeah. my style of uh, preaching is more or less like the uh, uh, other Protestant. Mm -hmm. We are praising also mm -hmm. so that they will be enjoying then mm -hmm. prayer, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. invoking the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, I'm, I, I'm challenged to go there. <laughs> We'll be happy to welcome you. Very yeah. happy. When are you going there? We're actually going back next week. Ah, uh, we're <laughs> <laughs> actually going uh, back. How is the fare? How much is the uh, fare going there? Uh, it depends on where you book. Mm. Like, uh, if you book it earlier, like uh, like six months ahead, you can get it below $1,000. But if you book it, like, maybe two months ahead, you can get it, like, um, a thousand six hundred, thousand five hundred. The nearer, almost. the more expensive. Yeah, the nearer, the more expensive. So it's better you book it like um, far early, early, yeah, yeah. early, so that you get it uh, below one thousand. Because yeah. I'll be in Canada by this September. Mm -hmm. The bishop there invited me for next year. Yes, oh, September. Mm -hmm. Because that's autumn. Eh? It's not mm -hmm. cold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How far is uh, Canada to Nigeria? It's Mm. Further than Philippines to no no Nigeria. no nearer like um, more or less because from from Nigeria to America it's more or less eight to ten hours mm. you know so to Canada around that time around same that, time yeah, same other time, end of yeah. that mm. Mm. okay that I is already planning this my yeah, I'll be in Winnipeg mm. Mm. after mm. after his Canada leg like, then he will visit Nigeria mm. hopefully yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah right. we have to get Avoid. their address. Mm. Mm. Yes. Okay, they, you'll be there, man. Yeah, we'll be there, yeah. Because yeah. I like to eat their food. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> you eat jollof rice. Oh, the, the, the jollof yeah, rice. We make it test rice. our delicacy, you mm. know. You like, this, like he said, fufu. Mm. We prepare a, spe a special soup, you know. You get with bare hand, you know. You get the fufu, mm. you put in the soup, mm. and you swallow. Ah. You know, yeah. We do that with our pan. We get the yeah. pan, we humol in the cafe, mm. and... <laughs> <laughs> This one you don't chew, you don't chew it, you don't chew it. Oh, you don't chew it, you, you just swallow it. Yeah, you don't chew it. Mm -hmm. oh, you just make it like you just make it like a ball. Oh. Mm -hmm. Make it like a, a small ball. Put mm -hmm. in the. Soup. So you don't. You don't savor the food. You just swallow it right away. Yeah, the 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 savor is the soup. It's like tambal. That's how we drink tambal. <laughs> we just swallow it. <laughs> Yeah, that, oh, that's, that's our, nice. That's our delicacy there. It's if very you, if loving, you eat it, I promise yeah, you. It can, it can, yeah, it's very, no? yeah. very, very. <laughs> it's mm. good. It will carry you for the whole day. Mm. You don't need to really? eat. Yeah, you don't need to eat, you know. Not you like, eat, the, like the Philippines, like breakfast, uh, painit, breakfast, snack, Snacks. pani udto, snack, yes. pani hapun, mm. midnight, seven times. Yeah. They're only uh, one time fufu. And then yeah. they will have milk tea, and then they will buy <laughs> <laughs> my classmates. They will buy milk tea, oh. and then buy coffee, oh. and then buy snacks, and then buy bread, <laughs> mm. and then like that. But fufu is is laden with energy, like it's a, a very heavy food, so mm. it will it takes time to digest, also mm. to move from the stomach to the intestine, so it will. It will really last. Mm. That's good. Tata mm. wants to try that. Well, mm -hmm. maybe yeah. if I will live there, I will reach up to 100. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. 
Mm. With vegetables. More than a hundred. Like, yes. Ah, so it's a complete. Yes, yes. It's like the granola bar of the of the last stage. You eat a granola bar to sustain you for the day, but it's not true. But yours is too full. Mm. Yes, it's ah. well. Mm. Now, what makes you de decide to, to be priest? Be priest? No? That's, yeah, true. Mm. Ano nagpari man mo? Well, coming to me because we, you know, this question has to be subjectively answered. <laughs> I will answer for myself, you know. Um, I initially, well, I came from, let me give a little background of my mm. family, you know. I came from a family of 10. We are eight brothers and two, sisters. I have eight brothers and two sisters, you know. But my father is, uh, my father is a very strict man, very disciplinarian. He's very, you know, I mean, those people, like every every morning he will ring bell every 4 a.m yeah. he will ring bell and wake us up you know we gather in the salaba in the sitting room mm. and we, he will start rosary he, at times wow. he, he may say food decades and uh, if you dare to sleep you know start 4 a.m people will be sitting sleepy and you may say oh my my camera how you sleep <laughs> and my father will carry water oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he will, he will, he will carry, if you don't sleep, he will pour water on you. I mean, and he may make us to be walking around to make sure that we finish that 20 decades of the ah, road. Dili, good mo matuog, mag ah, exactly. So 20 decades, yeah. 20 decades. 20 decades. Mm -hmm. And after that 20 wow. decades, it may end like every around... Every day? Every day. It may end like around 6 a.m. He may make all of us to attend morning mass. As in very strict to You know, in Nigeria, we have this um, culture of parents can really discipline their children, like beat them. Like if you disobey, they beat her out of you. Mm. <laughs> so our father used to beat us, like beat us hell, you know. You dare not disobey, you dare not challenge them, you dare not go contrary to what they So you cannot also, you cannot say, I will report it to the SWD, no, like if that. If you report to police, police will come and help him to beat you. <laughs> 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 so because discipline is discipline, a very important, a very important in the Nigerian, Nigerian culture. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's why we 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 run to our mom. Even we are afraid of our dad. You know. Even when we want to get like something from him, we don't have the courage because we are afraid of being scolded, being reminded of that we failed in school, this, that kind of thing. But we go through our mom. You know. So that's what, coming from such family. And I entered and became a sacristan. I was serving at mass, you know, coming closer to the church. So that was um, how I started getting my calling, you know, into priesthood. You know. Yeah. So and uh, after my secondary school, um, I decided to apply. Although my father never expected, you know, he never thought. He was thinking that the because you know I'm in the middle. I'm the sixth child. He was thinking that it was the first two or three of his sons that we enter seminary. In fact, he actually took them to seminary. And he wanted them to really join. Yeah, to join. Okay. In fact, he took them. And the first one went there. You know, he was. Um, he saw himself. He saw the opportunity as being freed from that bondage of the family. Ah, okay. <laughs> so and he became free and was acting. So, ah, my father said, "How can somebody in the seminary be acting this way?" My father went to the seminary, told the rector, I'm taking my son. <laughs> I want to train him myself, you know. So he went to the seminary and took him out, you know, and, and took him and sent him to the um, public school and said, if you finish, then if you want to become a priest, then enter yourself and join. Uh, so the second one went and came out. So I was the only one that was not taken there. I decided to go myself. Ah, uh, so your yes. choice, your yes, yes. I went mm. there because it's it's really it really came from me. So I applied. You know, when we, when we applied, we were like 120 that applied. So eventually, 20 passed the entrance exam. 100, 110, or, or more or less. You mm, know, only 20 passed. So that 20, we are also sub subjected to interview. Uh, both oral and written. And after that, ten eventually were taken. Oh wow! And so I was among the ten. So mm -hmm. you see that maybe God really <laughs> wanted me to to be here. And to mm -hmm. be because here. you also chose Him. Okay? Mm -hmm. Your other brothers, but yeah, were placed there. They did not, you know. Uh, now, how many years after your priesthood that 
he was sent here to study uh, medicine. Yeah. I was ordained 2014, and after my ordination, I was sent to a parish, you know, one of the big parishes in Nigeria. Then, I, as I was working there, I was also working in tribunal. Then, after one year, I was I served only one year in Nigeria, and I came here 2015. I was ordained 2014, and I came here 2015. So your experience in in a parish uh, works is short no? uh, one year one year. Yeah, one year how 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 do you feel in mm, serving the church yes well i served in a big church and in that church like the population the population in that church are uh, like more or less more or less uh, five to four to five million people well wow. you know and uh, there we have a um, ministry it was the pastor my my pastor because I was an associate pastor. So my pastor has a ministry, mm -hmm. but he gave me to be in charge of that ministry. So we are having like every Thursday adoration, mm -hmm. you know. So I will go, the people will gather, just like we do praises, praise and singing, you know. Then after, I will deliver my speech. And after the speech, I will pray. After praying, I will uh, do benediction. I will carry the mouth, our Jesus in the blessed sacrament and move around just to bless the people. So we used to do that every Thursday. In Nigeria, we have um, like people attend, like much people, just like here in the Philippines. You know, in a church, many people will, many people will be there, many people will gather. So we have the number. And we have the, the Catholics, they have the, the population. You know, so we do that every Thursday adoration. Uh, and uh, in that parish also, um, on a Sunday, we can have, just like here in the Philippines, can have more than eight to nine masses every Sunday. Mm. Uh, and within the day, we have like um, up to four masses, two in the morning <coughs> and two in the evening. You know, every, because it's really a big parish, yeah. Uh, we are like five priests staying there, you know. I'm the youngest mm. uh, and I'm the, I was the, <coughs> I was the bosser, you know. I was the one who gives them what they eat. <laughs> oh, okay. you know, so I mean, I was given really the responsibility in that my tender age, you know. So it exposed me. It exposed me. So it's, I really liked the, my experience working as a parish, as an associate pastor. So in one, uh, in one parish, how many uh, parishioners member in that one church? Mm. Like before it like in that my parish before we used to have like more or less four to five million but you oh. know my diocese yeah, no? yeah. my diocese the bishop my bishop has this culture of cutting down like from since we left now up to three parishes you know have been created from that mm. uh, yeah he has to this, accommodate yeah, yeah i've cut so kung magnisa mo father pilaman kataw daghan mo attend sa misa be like Gravia Jude, the church will be full. The church mm -hmm. will be full. More or less 500 to 1,000. Mm -hmm. Or more, yeah, in, a, in, one, in one mass. Mm -hmm. More than one, or more than, more or less, like the church will be full. Like, yeah, the church will be many people. Good. Like here in Cebu, we have more or less 150 parishes. Mm -hmm. oh, 150. Now, I was serving, 1995, I was serving Santo Rosario. Mm. We have 14 masses a day, wow. daily. Mm. During Sundays, we have 16 masses, mm. like that. Mm. So, na-enjoy good ka? Na-pari ka? Happy good ka? Yeah, of course, happy good ka. Yeah, happy good ka, because I really had the call, I really, Nobody forced me. Know, nobody, That's the important you know, nobody thing. forced me to uh, become what I am. Oh, oh no. sige kung si Father Lawrence kay kanang moto ihang story wa giun sa nya pagkapare mga tanatang Father Gabriel B. Mm. Okay, my story towards my journey mm. to the priesthood reminds me what Jesus himself says in the Bible, you know, he said, "You did not choose me, no, I chose you." So reflecting on my journey, I would I would, I would say that like it is a picture of like a magnet and a piece of iron. 
so the piece of iron may be may go to the magnet but mm. the the core the draw started from the magnet so i will feel that it was god who put that that longing in me because i entered the seminary quite a, at a very young age at 10 years 10 Only, years old yes, yes in 1995 mm. and before that when we are in our elementary like we use we have this tradition of asking the the teachers who usually ask us what are you going to be so mm. some will say barrister doctor like that but mm. i will say i want to be a priest uh, so know? from childhood yeah become... when i was like seven eight so that's why well towards the end of my elementary so my parents mm, bought the seminary form for me for the entrance exam and so i went to the entrance and the interview when actually at i think manga nine and a half or so but so, are you come? yeah i was really and the, the interview you have to for for them to really look at us very well you, you have to sleep in the seminary for three years for three days mm. so like yes. uh, okay mm. so i was yeah, really but like, ka, wala ka na had mga, yeah I, I was a bit afraid i missed my mom like mm. i missed <laughs> home yeah. but but like the drive was more mm. the drive was more and after that by god's grace i was successful and then 1995 I entered and God has been leading me till 2012 when when finally I became a priest mm. so so that's my with the hindsight I would say it has been God all the way and even after the ordination maybe I've uh, I think I've mentioned this in the beginning after my ordination I was in a parish for one year for, so after working for one year, I was made the manager of one of our school. Mm. Mm, it's now called. It, it used to be called Ogidi Boys High School. Now it is at Bishop Hiri Science and Technology School. So be, being there, I thought it was a permanent post. I will stay for some time. So, but I worked for three, for two years, two years there. And towards the ending of that, my second year, the priest in the neighboring parish where I stayed died. So the bishop, because of the vacancy that was made, we used to have our posting around September, October. This happened around November, around February. So because of that vacancy that was created, so the bishop asked me to be the interim parish priest. Mm. So it really made me, that was so from that February till around September we left for the Philippines. Mm. I was the Paris priest of that of that of Saint Martin of Tours. Mm. No, uh, but it, it was that really gave me um, a clue of what it means to be a Paris priest. You, mm. are, you are really in charge of the parish, mm. the accounting, mm. the generators, the church, <laughs> the security, as in everything mm. is just on it was like at night sometimes I go to bed around one. Because we really need to make sure and in the morning we have early morning man, you need to wake up at five o'clock or five thirty. It wasn't it was it wasn't easy, but I still thank God for that opportunity and experience everything is just a big and also it was a parish with just one priest so i had no assistant or, <laughs> yes or a resident priest so yeah, no being only you in a parish you have to struggle with with loneliness no. you have to struggle oh. with your prayer life <laughs> and then you still have to prepare your homilies mm. and then prepare meeting so all the masses yes even in the outstations manga burials uh, oh no like, oh, yeah. it's really Kali very Uro. tiring as in you see and at the same time i was still the manager of the school the because school. the bishop told me to so so after the morning mass and everything i have to drive out for the morning assembly in the school and stay in the office and then i'll come back in the evening but in all in all it has been god mm, i thank god for that experience it really molded me it really helped me how many mm. parishioners do you have mm, that place well i will not not so much because it's, it's in the province mm. like mm, i would say roughly around 
Not up to a million. Mm. Mm. Just <laughs> grab it. Uh, not up to mm. Mm. Say, What is the population you have? Oh. Uh, Nigeria has uh, more than 200 million. Mm. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. As of now, I'm currently, I think mm -hmm. currently 2022 is more around 210. <laughs> 210. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So big. Mm -hmm. How your, far are you to each other, mm -hmm. your place? We are from the same diocese. Ah, the same. Oh. Oh. The same diocese. Ah. The bishop sent us. We came the same ah. day. We are. Ah, so mm. you're together all the time. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like even we were like friends. We didn't know that we are like friends without even knowing that both of us will be chosen to ah, to mm. visit also. Yeah, to come here. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Unya, since you arrived here, sa Pilipinas, kapila man mo na kauli og Nigeria. Since 2015, diba? Yeah, since 2015. See, yeah, he went la only uh, once. He went last year. Oh. Me, I prepared to go. I was disposing myself to go to visit in 2020 mm. and buy summer holidays around June, July. But in the pandemic, pandemic broke man. Out, yes, in 2020, February, March. Mm. Uh, so I didn't go. So. I was planning 2021, but um, there was an incident. My passport was stolen, oh, no. my laptop, everything in the parish where we stayed. So, so because of that, my documents were not really complete. So that's why I really then I postponed everything to this. Um, to mm. this year. Oh, yeah. during the pandemic, nagun saman mo dere dere mo sibu in the room lang. <laughs> Well, like uh, me, I'm, I'm not like since pandemic started until I come to Karon, I go out every day because um, <laughs> you know I see our, I was I see our uh, of course we are we are doctors you know we are working in, mm. in medicine you know? and uh, also I see priesthood like as as Christ like mm. you are there to die for the people even in, during the pandemic people are dying. Some people are dying of COVID. Like I had this, I had one encounter that I usually, I nearly, you know, went to. Somebody called me for sick call in Chongma Hospital, mm. and the person said, "Father, please, can you come? My father is dying. I cannot get a priest. Every priest I call, they say, 'Kahalo, kahalo, kahalo, you know, kahalo.' Mm. I said, Father, I really want my father to be anointed before. So I told myself, the father is COVID positive." You know, and he told me my mm. father is COVID positive. Mm. So the, the the dilemma now is, can I take the courage to go and anoint a COVID positive person? Mm. So I told myself, well, this is the work of God. That um, I will go. So when I called up Shongwa, Shongwa has to tell me, no, it's not possible. You know, this is that. So I I said, okay, is there hospital policy? But around 1 a.m., 2 a.m., the family kept calling me, crying on phone. Mm. Father, please, can you help us? The member of family called me from America. Father, please, can you go? Then, around, I had to call someone again. Mm. I told someone, look, the family has decided to pay for my PPE, mm. like PPE. Mm. And each PPE costs more or less 2000 mm. As I told the someone hospital, the bar, doctors will go inside that room and, and give him medication, right? The doctors will enter there with PPE and the family will pay. Now, why can't you allow a priest to also enter with that same PPE and annoy this person who is dying? Correct. Mm -hmm. you know, so that was the argument I put up. Mm -hmm. So after me, I had to really stand my ground. So eventually they allowed me. Mm -hmm. So I went the next morning, they gave me PPE. <laughs> so I wore PPE, entered inside. After anointing that person, one hour after anointing that person, he died. So probably God kept yes, him yes, alive, alive for that anointing. Yes. And Just he waiting me, for that. Yeah, waiting for that anointing. So, so I never said no. Mm. Like people will invite you, even in St. Peter, mm. somebody will die of COVID, you'll be mm. invited. So I cannot say no because he is COVID positive. And luckily for me, since COVID started, I have never tested positive. <laughs> I go out every day, I touch COVID people, mm. you know, I you know more or less i think it's god because i'm <laughs> yeah. not afraid i told people there is no difference between somebody who who died of covid and somebody who died of cancer or heart mm. attack mm. that is dead same when the tatai yeah. tatai said even hug them 
Yeah, because <laughs> you know, COVID is just a sickness. And these people are human beings with heart. You cannot just throw them away because they died of COVID. Mm -hmm. You know, there are sicknesses. Of course, we are doctors. I would rather go to a COVID patient than go to a TB patient. Because TB is highly infectious. And when you contact TB, the treatment will be more or less six months plus. Mm -hmm. But you can get COVID, you can recover within two, within within one week. If you boost your immune system, you can recover. So why why are we gonna treat them like as they are the, outcasts? You know, yeah, medical outcast. doctor and spiritual doctor. Yes, both, both. <laughs> both. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I I've known yung, you before. Ilara you kontra tay lockdown yeah. lang kontra <laughs> You know, I, you heard about that provincial jail was uh, contaminated with uh, COVID, mm. 60 plus. Mm. Wow. I was the one who handled that and uh, no casualties. Mm. It's, mm. it's a news. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm not afraid of COVID. Yeah. <laughs> That's well, me, me too. Mark 1616. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, so nice. That was how we spent our life during pandemic. Yes. It was really seven people. I didn't, I didn't lock myself mm. in a room because people need, even even some people will request for the police, I want the last mass to be said for my dad of my parents. Mm. Even at times, the family member will not be allowed to see their yes. dead one before. Because they it's, it's, allowed, they just, yeah. um, they sick, alone, sila, and they come and when they die, mm. they should cremate. So, yeah. what get a chance to see them so again? That, and you see the family, they are in pain. Mm, you know, know and people look at them as people will avoid them you know how they avoid like in the bible they avoided the leper the, the yeah, leper like the know? plague uh -huh. yeah as if they committed a crime a mm. heinous crime of course anybody can get covid but right, get, getting, getting covid is not a crime getting covid is just like getting 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 dengue mm. and getting flu you know so we have to treat them with love just like you say, we have to bet if we are hugging them, we have to put face masks. <laughs> <laughs> I never wear masks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that is our life um, during pandemic. So now that after na pandemic, okay, okay na. What's your what are your daily activities, man? Kay man naman mag school, no? Mm. Well, um, like we were, we just ended our this thing not so mm. long ago. You know, because what after Mark 16, 16, when you graduate from medical school, mm. you know, you have to do PGI. Oh, like internship internship more. Internship. Yeah, so mm. I was uh, doing my postgraduate internship in Soto. Ah, nag Soto ka? Yeah, nag Soto, ka nag internship? Yeah, internship is uh, internship is the final year of medicine. Ah, the PGI yeah. now? Yeah, but PGI ongoing. is after internship. So mm. my PGI was in Soto, so I just ended. I just ended because I went to America mm. uh, to serve there for summer job. So when I came back, so I had to end my PGI to prepare for my board exam. Unya ang soto na usaka katre daghan pasyente. How was yeah. it, man? Soto is so toxic. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was like so kapoy kapoy. <laughs> so kapoy kapoy. Kapoy like, ka. Yeah. Kamo sa Father Gabriel, kuyog mo sa soto mm. pud. Yeah, he also worked in Soto. Mm. Yeah, he also worked in But it's really, that is. Ikaw kapoy kapoy siya. Kapoy kapoy. Kapoy kapoy siya. Kapoy kapoy siya. Kapoy kapoy siya. And you know, the problem is that Soto, uh, I don't know of now because we just ended. We are not doing um, face to face. Yeah, yeah. Like you have, you have to do teleconsult. Mm. So before you are, before you come to the hospital, except on emergency, except on, on emergency, emergency case, on emergency hospital. cases. Yeah. Mm. You know, but now maybe they have. Um, yeah. You know, people face will call you. Face to face now. Will call you for the please. My my number is number seven. Number. Can you make me? You know to come so that. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, so magpatabang mm. nimo para maatiman na sila. Yeah. Kaya na may uh, uban, dugay man. Yeah, and you know, like in Soto, all the challenges, that, there was a war that was working in Soto. Um, like, you, you see that every day. Like, you can, you can be doing CPR, like CPR mm. is scheduled mm. uh, pulmonary resuscitation in a patient. Yes. After doing the CPR, the patient may recover. Then, maybe the next, after one hour, he will go into code again, mm. you know, shop. 
and after that he made that like the person you are, you be talking to mm. so but being a priest also you know so we are also because they know that i'm a priest and i'm working there so i may be in my world so if somebody is critical and is dying in icu they you may will annoy them also yeah. father Lawrence, please can you go to icu some they need your attention is needed when i go there it will be anointing so i was happy like serving in mm. that in that capacity mm. like doing my job as a pgi doctor and also serving as a priest like if somebody there was somebody i entered the room to anoint so i was wearing my doctor scrub so they, they thought it was a doctor that came in <laughs> so when i when I, I opened my bag i said you are in my chassis I said, oh <laughs> so it made them really too they are happy you know sir and i think happy after anointing a patient you know maybe after some time that person may die you know because that anointing carries forgiveness of sin it's yeah. like going for confession mm -hmm. yeah. although not much people are having that opportunity <laughs> if you have that opportunity it's like a grace of god like god wanted you that is why one of the things I, I know, I don't like is like sudden death, like mm. bam, heart attack, that person yes. will die. Mm. I like I like to prepare myself, Better. and God may give you sickness to use that opportunity to prepare yourself. So sickness is not like a crime. Like somebody suffering cancer before he dies, that cancer may be a grace of God for that mm. person to use that period of cancer to prepare himself. Because some, some people will just bam heart attack, we die, no preparation, nothing. Some people will just accidents, bam, they will die instantly. Yeah. So I Poor God, soul. Yeah, yeah, I don't want that kind of death if mm. God would do it for me, mm. you know. So I like to prepare myself because I want I want to save my I want to go to heaven, you know. And that's really the uh, the longing of every soul, you know, to make heaven. Okay. Tell your bishop mm. we can go there as long as you give us a free ticket, no charge of our service. Yeah. Mm. Ten of us. Yeah. We have a praise and worship there, mm. healing, mm. Uh, preaching. Mm. We can go around, we will, whether your bishop brings us, we will go. Yes, yeah. We are ready. Mm. We have a team of ten, mm. it's our organist. Mm. Uh, and then we'll learn also, because we'll learn also his uh, role is Cameraman, dancer, mm. and catcher. <laughs> <laughs> dancer and catcher. Nindo tayo na happy ko. Untana sa ko ng Father Gabriel be unsa iyang experiences sa Soto. Soto only kan kamong duha together man mo always no. No, so, I I had my my leadership in Veles ah, Hospital. Ah, uh, okay. And then also in CSMC. Uh, and CCMC? Yes. <laughs> okay. CSMC is mm. Cebu South, Cebu South, the former Talisay District. Ah, okay, okay. Maria. South Bay, yeah, yeah, Talisay yeah. Hospital. Okay. Mm. Government Hospital still? Yes, still. Uh, so I had, I had my experience there. Mm, then after graduation, I had, I started my, my PGI in Soto. Then along the way, my bishop, Mm, wants me to come home first mm, mm. to maybe to discuss with him and then to continue my training in Nigeria mm. Mm, so that's why I, I started then I cut short my my PGI and started preparing my document because you have to go to the to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs mm. you have to go so the Ganka documents to get mm. so that you can easily and safely go back so mm. that's what i've been doing but for that my period in soto i rotated under family medicine mm. it was really mm. an eye opener because family medicine is like a general like you see all kinds dermatology you see all kinds of skin infection you meet mm. people with tb you meet people like all kinds not just a specialty like mm. general mm. so it was an eye opener and it made me, um, it made me appreciate very well. Though it is busy, but it made me appreciate the government work they do here. But it is busy; it is free. You no know, people who come there, they says, no doctors fee. You meet the doctors; the doctors <laughs> will really treat you for free. Like all the attention they are giving to them, it's I, I will not hide about it. I was 
mesmerized about it, really. Also in CSMC, like many people will line up. Sometimes even we will get very tired. And the doctors themselves, the consultants, them, and sometimes they will get tired, but they continue mm -hmm. seeing patients, treating them with compassion and free. They will do it till lunch time. Like I was really impressed, you no, know, with the health system. At least the ones I experienced yes. in Soto and also in in Talisay. It's good that you mm -hmm. said that because mm -hmm. unfortunately it took somebody not from the Philippines to see the hard work and the mm. sacrifice that really. our government doctors mm. are doing really. to serve mm. the people mm. because sometimes it's the people themselves who are mm. given free service that are complaining mm. oh, so there are also things mm. like that uh, there's a difference mong good in kanang service and healthcare gani sa mm. private o mm. sa public mm. hospital so yeah. hopefully one mm. day you we will ano uh, uh, but you, you know things like this is that they usually say that the pe the person in pain is most sensitive. Mm. So maybe people may complain because maybe they are really in pain, they really wanted to be attended to. But the fact is that because it is government and it is free, there's a lot of people there. Mm. You no. Know? So maybe when you come your number will be like sixty. Hard to be patient, yes, no? yes. Mm. And the doctors will be must have seen thirty before you like that. But so in that perspective, it may we may, uh, may, may, may like to understand maybe some of their complaints, but the fact remains that the doctors really put in, like from my experience, the doctors really put in a lot. Mm. Mm. Really. Y mm. Your experiences, Dinhe, sa Filipinas, mm. how will it help you when you go back to Nigeria and serve the people there also? This is really a very nice okay. question. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yes. It, I believe it, it it has already, the process has started already be, be, because everything starts from the mind. You know, once there is a change of mindset, bringing it out will be, will be easier. So from my experience here, if I go back, it, I will really give my all in serving the people and knowing that you know, the joy of being, let's say, a doctor, depending on what our bishop will want us. So mm. if our bishop wants us to go into full clinical practice or to managerial positions or to depending on, but wherever I will find, I will, you know, I will see myself, I really, I really give in my own, I really serve the people, you no, know, not counting much of the gains, really. How about you, Father Lawrence? Mm, well, you know, you just ask us how to apply our what we, but you did not ask us our experience here. <laughs> <laughs> but let me touch from our experience mm. here before I, I talk of how to apply it. Yeah, although you know that um, generally, like I was said before, when I was asked to come to Philippines, I didn't know about Filipinos and our Filipinos. Mm. So. But the priest that assisted us, you know, came here, studied for one year, then went to America. So he told us that you don't need to worry that Filipinos are hospitable mm. and that uh, 90, more than 95% of them are Catholics. So this is the information we had. And when we came here, uh, it was like Sakto Jutka Ayo, you know, Sakto Jutka Ayo, that um, Filipinos are predominantly Catholics mm. and they are so welcoming. You know, thanks to the Archbishop of Cebu. Mm -hmm. In fact, he's like he's like he's like a father to us. But he took us he took us in, you know, because where we are staying, mm -hmm. he gave us we are not we are living in a church, we are living in a parish, we are not paying anything. Mm -hmm. You know, we accommodation free, feeding free. You know, so and each time with time we go also and meet him and report and share experiences with him. Or he also told us how he studied in uh, in Manila, he, mm -hmm. he was once like us, you know, mm -hmm. and shared how, how difficult it might be, you know. So, and also some families we met there, like, you know, Espena's family mm -hmm. who adopted us. Mm -hmm. uh, like every week, every weekend, we just go there, we eat, we, you know, the mom, Mom Espena, uh, he, mm -hmm. he, will, he will like mm -hmm. spoil us with food. <laughs> he will spoil us with food. You know, like you said, I eat like more or less seven to eight times a day. <laughs> seven to eight times a day, you know. Yeah. So it was really the experience was really so 
marvelously good, you know, and also meeting with some people, especially the lay people who really showed us love. Even Hamtut Karan showed us love. Mm. Although, time, you know, like everybody must not be good. You know, although we met during our experience, we also met one or two people that um, tried to show us the opposite of how who Filipinos might be, you know, what Filipino <laughs> is. This camp, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, so, and uh, unfortunately, some, some of them are from this, our mm. fold. Some mm. of them are like mm. priests, mm. you know. So, uh, maybe because they thought uh, maybe um, we are blocking them. Like, you know, like we, uh. we, are, like, we are like seven years here mm. in the Philippines and we made friends, right? Mm. And those friends, like, if we go to mass, if we say mass for you, so if you like the mass and the, you like the home, you can recommend to your friends, mm. you know, and their friends will come and invite us. So maybe we stay in a parish like um, with some of um, such people, and every time we are being invited, and they are not being, they are not being invited, ah, so they may like get, get jealous, mani, yeah. Oh, uh, so, and they may be acting it out, we don't mm. know, you mm. know, so. But that is just minority to compare with majority of what we experience. Mm. Generally, it's good. All those you just look and overlook. You just look and overlook. But just to say that, <laughs> um, you know, it's not really, you know, one, you know, in, in, a, in an exam, uh, if you score 95, mm. uh, you passed. It's a good grade. Know, yeah, but oh. uh, the, the five percent, the five you you missed. Oh. You just <laughs> so, pila man ang grados Pilipinas ni mo? Barangay, you know, mm. and to the police, yeah, we did the, we did the needful, you know. So <laughs> what did the fun? Yeah, they, yeah, they, they didn't follow it up. I don't know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't follow it up, you know. So, but more or less, um, and the priest, like we started with Monsignor Monsignor Montesilio, mm. yeah. sure. he's really like a father. Uh, a father to us. Like when he was. Um, Unfortunately, when he was in the hospital in Chongwa during pandemic, so he caught COVID, you know. So maybe uh, one of the uh, one of the relations called me up and said, hey, maybe no priest. You know, this aura, this still fear of COVID. Maybe people are he's trying to avoid COVID people. You know, but when he, when I was called, I said, this person is my fellow priest, and probably who knows, maybe dying. The person suko. You know, so I went there, and um, I, I also wore PPE. I went in and anointed, anointed him. Because he's a Muslim, he's a priest. Uh, if it were me in that condition, I would pray that my fellow priest will come and anoint me. So I went there. I went in there. I anointed, uh, I anointed him. I was happy uh, because he treated his, he treated he treated us well. You know. And when he was uh, discharged from the hospital, he eventually got free of COVID. I continued to go to him every Sunday. I would say red mass for him, you know, in his sick bed and give him communion. So I, I continued that until the time he, he died. Mm. You know, because he was really the person that much the Montecilio. Mm. He welcomed us in God of And after that, another group of priests came. We worked well with them, mm. you know. It was after them that maybe the other sets came, mm. maybe they came the with a different priest. mindset. The current. Uh, they came with a different <laughs> mindset. So, but that is why I say you don't, you, just, uh, you have been treated well mm. by some people. Mm. So, you know, yeah. So that's why major, uh, generally, like you said, above 90. Mm. So, Pasar again, boy. Yeah, Pasar again. Yeah. <laughs> of course, <laughs> always, <laughs> always. <laughs> How is COVID now in your country? Mm. Well, we actually never had serious COVID. You know, Nigeria is very, like, very hot. Like, the situation, the, the temperature there with Patai COVID. Patai da ay da yun. Kay init day kayo dito. Init, init ka na yun. Masamang init ka ng, diri ato ane, init yan, ase uwan-uwan dito. Um, there is init but not humid. 
Very humid yeah, man. Yeah, it's humid. <laughs> Very alimuot. <laughs> Dito init lang good. Yeah, init lang good. Yeah. So we don't have, we don't wear face masks. We not like we don't. Covid is not serious in Nigeria. <laughs> mm. It's not serious in so, Nigeria. What kind of tie rule this? I like to go to place where Covid is. Uh, <laughs> that kind. Uh, mm. Mm. Yeah, so. so so how long have you been here? What, seven years Seven now? years. Yeah, seven years. <coughs> we came here 20, 2015. Yeah, 2015. Mm, Sakto mo, yeah. eight years na mo. Uh, so, nanasad mo yung mga friends nga ka ng lay people din he, nga ka ng kuan, ka ng, you know, di man said na all the time nga naaragid ka sa magmisa, di ba? So, di rin, nanapod mo yung mga other foster families other than the Espinas nga welcome I have this this the Espina family have been very close to us no mm -hmm. oh, and also they are also living in Guadalupe mm -hmm. just do all such as if we are hungry we can just walk into the <laughs> house and, and very and go then to we, their yes, house I will and do that yeah I will go to yeah, Guadalupe and go the mother there. will never le leave, leave you unless we are you no know, overfeeding you you really need to if you are full he she will not agree until it is over you just eat far but um in addition to the Espina family or the members of the family I am close also to um, Tan. There's a family that lives in Talesai, Tan mm. and Owano mm. family. Mm. Mm. They are really very, very close. Like your other families yes. here. Mm. My That's other nice. families here. Every everything I do, I have to ask them. I have to do with them. Mm. I have to bet the barrier. Everything. Mm. Mm. So I wish to thank them also here. You know, through this mm, live television. You no. Know? Thank you mm. so much. Mm. And many other families also. Mm. Betaw. Mm. You know. So, what will happen man kung Pasko? Kanang, nabi ay na mga holidays ang Pilipinas ba nga? People spend it with their families. Come mo, on sa aman ninyo. Kaya the priests here will also go home. Di ba tayo ang uban will go home be with their families. Come mo, come mo, raga panduha kuyog. Um, well, during Pasko here in the Philippines, we used to be very very busy mm. yeah, like we used to, christmas period is one of the most busy, busy period yeah you know like starting from this they get like any starting from guadalupe uh, fiesta mm. okay, December, yeah, from, oh, first no, week. Uh, from mm. november uh, first week we have no novena mm. every day novena mm. till 12 after novena <laughs> you know then immediately after novena now i miss the girl i miss the girl we say miss the girl it will end yeah. like um 24 25 mm. christmas mm. Then many people, many families, many companies mm, might invite you for year. Christmas party, Christmas mm. mass. You know, like we, really, we are really busy, so we don't have these feelings of missing home. Loneliness, because well, like we are, loneliness. Yeah, we are busy. You know, people mm. invite us, and that, and that was where I met this uh, family of, of uh, JY Cop, you know, family, who also was very kind. You know, in fact, there is a, a little car I, I I bought when I was using. <laughs> so they they really like um. You know, we are so good that, mm. uh, like, supporting supporting us also, like, uh, financially. Mm. So I wish to also thank them. Mm. Yeah, they are a company. They are, like, construction company. So I I really thank them also. And also to so many other families, you know, Where I cannot start stay, mentioning huh? them. You stay in the in church, Guadalupe. in Guadalupe Church. Oh, Guadalupe church. Mm. Mm. Thanks to the Archbishop of Cebu, mm. Archbishop mm. Palma. Pa. You know? mm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. He is also one of my member. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He participated mm -hmm. also. No, he in is. Our he is really a father. He is really, mm -hmm. really a father to mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. We will not easily forget him. Yes, even we, really even when we go yes. back to Nigeria, even when we work as doctors, he will always be in our hearts. You know? mm -hmm. We will, We are planning to invite him. Actually, our diocese in Nigeria is an ash diocese. Mm -hmm. It's really like more or less a big, a big yeah. diocese, you know. Like um, and um, and our archbishop is also young, like 60, 69, right? 69, mm -hmm. and he really wants us to invite, mm -hmm. just not to really pay back what mm -hmm. he did, but mm -hmm. just to show appreciation. 
Mm. Yeah, to him. So that he also sees where we we came from, you know. One of the things I also learned here in my it opened my eyes that um, people don't know the difference. Many people don't know the difference between Africa, Nigeria, <laughs> Ghana. <laughs> you know, you know. Like if you tell them uh. yeah from Nigeria, so is it Nigeria is it Africa in Nigeria? <laughs> you know, uh, so they and, they um, they usually depend on the color of the skin. That's yeah. why even if you're Australian yeah. or you're British, they tell you Joe. Give yeah. me money, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> All nice so. Joe. And they, they, they thought, um, you know, that if you come from like, you know, Kenya, like if you want to experience wildlife, it depends on the kind of the part of the Africa that you travel. Mm. Like if you want to see like wildlife, like a lions, elephant, mm. you know, you go to Kenya, something like that. And then you if you want, want to city, see the city, you, you go to a particular Bria. place. Yeah, if you want to see, <laughs> like, so it depends on, you know, Africa supposed to be, Africa actually supposed to be um, just like America, United States of America. It, has, it, should, it should be United States of Africa. Mm. But, you know, because of this colonialism, colonialism. so all these countries, mm. they, they divided Africa, France, yeah, they colonized Africa because of the, in the whole world, it's only in Africa that we have yeah, God a bless Africa resources. with a lot of natural resources, yes. and that attracted them. All these colonial masters, you know, like in Nigeria, we have oil, we have gold, we have diamond, we have this, you know. But they came, colonized Africa, you know, <laughs> and uh, you know because we have it, but we don't have the, we don't, we lack the, maybe the machines to process, process and extract it, yeah, and extract it. But they have it. The so that's why they, yeah, yeah, that's why they came. You know, source with, with other Africa, with other African But I countries. think it's already evolving. That's why they're also sending, like you, you're being sent here to learn medicine, right? Because mm. you can apply that later in mm. your in your parishes, in your, mm. to your you, you need the money. Like if it's after studying, you need money to buy oh, <laughs> all those yes. equipment. You don't, yeah. So, that's, um, very nice, very nice. Mm. Had I known you earlier, we can go. Pwede pa nyo mo sila kuyugun tayo. Susunod mo mo nga out of town. Asam, ah, na pa makikaming? Wala na? They are living in mm. the next week. Ah, mm. next week? Lord God, na dahil ni sila. Di na mo mamalik din sa Pilipinas? Mm. <laughs> o kalimot na mong binisayo, ha? Mm. May nara ba kami mong binisayo? O, oh, unsa man mo kadugay na kakatunog binisaya. How long did it take you? Ah. Um, like me, initially when I came, I had to hire a teacher who was like, um, common, and yeah, come. yeah mm. to teach me, you know, and I used to talk with some people, some manga manga bataba. So, yeah, <laughs> oh. so, so we chat, we talk, you know, I didn't like go to official um, school, mm. yeah, but I borrowed, I borrowed some of his books. Mm. You know, so I was um, reading. You know, Father Gabriel, and he brought the an. Yeah, mm -hmm. because he went to he went to school. He mm -hmm. went to he attended mm -hmm. really Besaya School. So mm -hmm. But Besaya in Jabal, they are oh. yeah, also more of uh, Tagalog. Tagalog no? mix. Mm -hmm. Tagalog bin Besaya. Mm -hmm. Taga. Oh. Yeah, so Tagalog mo na sila. Tagalog na Tagalog. So mga unsa man six months, one year, na ka mauna mo bin Besaya. More or less six months, one year, two years, like continuous pa. Oh. Uh, Sana on January, I have a tour in Surigao, Kicharao, Barubo. Bito, kuyog ta na sila, Surigao area. That we are going next week. Mm. Yeah. How I wish, how I wish. Mm. I just wish. Next line. time, mo suri mo, mo balik mo dere, yung mong tatay, no? no? Basta, we are open for the invitation. Oh. So, this is my team. Okay. Oh, or tatay will go to Nigeria, mm. di ba? Mm. Mm. Yes, ko na yun si Kuan, si Tito Eric. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's why. Mag magkuyog good ganit mo, ani. Akong feeling. Mag kuyog mong konsihal Eric, ani. Oh. Mag add to, ano? Archbishop Palm. Just tell your bishop, we are open. Oh, mag add to man said ko na sa Archbishop Palm. Because our dad is, just like you said here, they have one, 150 something uh, parishes. Mm. I think in, uh, in my diocese we have uh, around mm. like more than 300, mm. going to 400, more or less 400. Know. Yeah, we have, we have really, mm. we have really. Yeah. And my diocese, uh, mm. 
in our priests is like going to 600 500 mm. 600 priests mm. yeah although some of us are working like in different parts of the world in uh, by september we'll be going for, i think 26 churches mm. here in, in Cebu. canada ah, yeah. okay. in canada oh. wow 26 that's big wow no, that's yeah, big. i really think you have this strong you have you are 80 mm. plus mm. and you mm. <laughs> god, god really really bless mm. you know when you are sharing about what uh, happened to you mm. you know when god wants to use you like god you are not you are like an instrument mm. you know when you have the knife you have to sharpen that knife depending on what yeah. you want to cut it with mm. yeah, so maybe god so is i, I love to go you. to nigeria yeah. before i leave so I'm not going to leave. Oh, well, I'm going to leave. Oh, well, I'm going to leave. 80 years old, any time. No. You still have a lot of things to do. Yeah, it's very many. So I tell them, like, when I when I went to celebrate mass for Mrs. Zapatai, I usually ask them, do you want to go to heaven? They will say, yes, yes, yes. I'm going to ask Karon. Say, Dili, oi. I ask him, can you summon? They say, in God's time. They say, can you say in God's time? God's time maybe Karanga be. God's time maybe Uguma Buntang. God's time maybe next week. Say, my man, Karanga. So, you know, so the, I told them, actually, it's only him that will decide, no other person. And you cannot say, oh, they lay a long time. Maybe among a senior lang after them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> priority. Yeah, priority. So <laughs> it can come to anybody. Mm. It can come to anybody. That is why we really need to, we really need to prepare ourselves. Uh, because um, to come to this life is an opportunity. And before you go, just like that, I said, you have to do your job. You have to fulfill your responsibility. Everybody has responsibility given to him and uh, to leave your imprint. And uh, when you leave it well, the way you die, people are going to miss you. If you come here, you are get you get distracted. Like some people will do. You know, <laughs> they get distracted with the things of this world. Like if they give you responsibility, instead of thinking on how to touch it, it's like mm. they'll be thinking on how to mm. make their pocket yeah. to be so big. Mm. Money. You know, the funny thing is that whatever we have in this world, mm -hmm. one day, once you lie on your sick bed, you discover that you, are, you, are, you have nothing. Only you and your God. The only thing that you have is your good works. Mm -hmm. And if you are like a good work, patai. If you like a good work, you, you, go, you discover that you are going empty-handed. Mm -hmm. All this, you now see all your property. You see uh, your, your, your <laughs> fortune, you see your condo. company, you see your condo, all those things will be, they, are, they, are not, they don't belong to you again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they don't belong I to you. I, I, I like a good work, but, oh. I, so but I get You I, come I, to this world with empty hands, yeah. Yeah. you have yeah. to yeah. live. Like live with with Alexander the Great, when he was dying, he was a prince and he was yeah. so rich. Yeah. He made three requests. And part of the request he made was, I told him, when I die, bring my hand outside the casket and open it mm. so that people will see that all this my riches i have Spent nothing it. with me as i go i have nothing with me so the only thing that you really go with is mm. how many lives you are able to touch not how many property not how many licenses not how many degree you acquire but how many lives you are able to touch you know that is the what that is the only thing that matters in life and not okay, very mm. nice reminder wala mm. akong gi-check bitaw ganina bitaw onya nindot ka ayo nga reminder tay onya sa dili pa ta mag mag imuhang kuan tay ato sa pangayuan nakatag naman sa iyang message si Father Lawrence mga itang Father Gabriel sa imuha sa parting message before we end the program on sa imuhang message sa mga tao ug sa imuhang Fans, kay kuya, wonder baka gani na TV di ay ni abi na radyo ana. Mumensahe pa der Gabriel. Don't forget your name with your archbishop. Sige, Father Gabriel, a great imuhang viewers og imuhang kinsa to imong mm. panganlan. Mm. Okay, so first and foremost, as our parting message, I we thank the Lord Almighty, you no, know, for this opportunity. Actually, as I as I stood to, to, to Eric on our way here, this is my first time of live.
television. TV. Mm. Uh, TV I was, mm. Actually, I thought it was just a radio. <laughs> <laughs> then when I came, I was still so bad. In all, we thank God for every experience we have in life. We thank Hatai also and, also and everyone here for this opportunity. In a special way, we wish to thank our Archbishop in our diocese, Archbishop Valerian Madoka Okeke. No? A very good man. Even a good man that even his enemies say he is good. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's the really that is, good man. Like even really? his enemies confess. They, will, they, they say every other thing, but they say anyway, anyway, he's a good man. Oh. You could imagine. <laughs> mm. Mm. So we are, um, me and Father Law and also other priests from my diocese, we are really lucky. You no, know? I've already told him that directly, but I also wish to say it here. We are really lucky. To have him as our Archbishop, no. Um, secondly, I wish to thank the Archbishop of Cebu. No, I've said it before, but in the Bible, emphasis is made with repetition. No, mm -hmm. anything mentioned in the Bible, maybe after two verses, it is mentioned again. It is for emphasis. No, I wish also to thank the Archbishop of Cebu, Archbishop Jose Palma, a very man with a very large, large very large hands. You know, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, mm -hmm. Father Gabriel. Mm -hmm. And yeah. also mm -hmm. the general, many of our friends and relatives and friends we met here in Cebu. Espina family, Tan and Owano family, some of my classmates. Oh, and yes, classmates. I will not forget, I will not forget. Today, the medical board exam result came out mm. you know, just this morning. Mm. So I wish to thank yes, oh. I wish to thank some of my classmates, some of my friends that took the board and passed. Mm. Congratulations. Timmy Ena, Eroy oh. and many <laughs> others. You no, know. thank thank I thank God for you. Mm. Mm. And Arabis. Mm. Thank you. Okay. So, Napakay yeah. pasalamatan or mm. agreed father. Mm. Well, just like he said, um, first of all, to our Ebo Archbishop, you know, who, you know, the, you know, the uh, my bishop was the one who baptized me as a priest, as 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 a priest when he was a priest working in one parish. Mm. I was still manga, one month old, so he baptized me, and uh, then when I entered seminary, he ordained me a priest. Mm. So it was really, I mean, very, mm. <laughs> you know. In the, uh, that the person you were baptized as a bata, mm. you are now the person as a bishop. Because when he was baptizing me, he never knew he would be a bishop. A bishop yeah. And he never knew that person would be a priest. Yes, yes. You see the coincidence. So eventually I became a priest, he became a bishop, and he now ordained me. You know, so it's really like a father, you know, very close friend. You know, so I really thank him. And I really thank him a lot. And also for having given us this opportunity to study medicine, you know. Part of the question people will ask me, I have entertained it a lot, is that uh, people will ask you, Otarika and Gautzoka? Maybe doctor, maybe engineer the Ica? People will ask also, then maybe, Father, when you graduate um, from doctor, medicine, oh. are you going to leave the priesthood or are you going to marry? Why, why are you telling me no? <laughs> So, <laughs> I, I simply answer them. All these things are just for service. Mm -hmm. You know, all these things are just for service. You know, like we ask both of us as scholars. You know, our tuition fees we are paid by our bishop. That mm -hmm. was part of the reason why we are thanking him. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really expensive to train somebody in medicine, not to talk of train two persons. Mm -hmm. And and he was paying that from Nigeria. Mm. You know, so it's really, we thank him a lot, you know, we really thank him and um, and all the friends, you know, we, being a priest and studying medicine could be challenging, you know, because our pre-med was just simply philosophy of theology, <laughs> our pre-med, mm. it's never, it's nothing related to science. Mm. So when we entered, <laughs> eventually, <laughs> it was really challenging to us, so thanks to some of our classmates who we are teaching us, you know, helping us to get our footings, mm. you know, like if we had any challenge, we go to some of them, and they will be so humble to teach us, despite the tension, because everybody is trying to survive, to, yes. because medicine is so hard, 
medical school is so challenging and so difficult. So, but they were really there for us, helping us, teaching us. So I really thank whoever that has helped me to pass my exam and to succeed in medicine and watching this program. I thank you. I may not remember every name, you know, but I'm really, really grateful to all of you. So as what we have gathered here will help us to, at least, just like you said, as we are going back, we are now half Nigerians, half Filipinos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are now half, half Nigerians, half Filipinos. At times, as I was talking, as I was, you know, chatting with somebody in Nigeria, mm -hmm. I remember that I was typing to Bono. I said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I did it to somebody. I said, Sige, Sige. When I said, ah, it was in Nigeria, I said, Sige, Sige. I said, Father, what is this? <laughs> 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 well, I did it unconsciously. Oh, this is to say that oh. some, some, some part of some Philippine has, I'm now half Philippine, half, half Nigerian. Mm -hmm. you know, so unconsciously, mm -hmm. you know, I've been, um, uh, it has entered into me. So I really thank um, uh, Salamatan, you know. So I thank also, just like he said, the Bishop of Cebu, Abishop Palma. He's really a father. But we lack words to, to thank him. Thank you. Know, thank you. So I know I know he will watch this. Even if you know, <laughs> people will tell him, please tell him that we thank him that he's a good man. I th I will say it anywhere, even in Rome, mm. even in America. Mm. Where, wherever I go, I will say you are a good person. <laughs> and we are a good person. So thank you so much. And thank you for this opportunity. And take th I thank Tita Eric for uh, making this opportunity for us to come here and be having this um, and I thank the Espina family who adopted us. You see, Father Gabriel is so tambuk, no? I'm so tambuk. <laughs> <laughs> so they feed us every week. You know, even giving us, like mommy is giving us, even financial support. Mm. You know, because being a priest, you know, you don't have, um, you don't have work. You depend on the charity of people. Of other people. And, uh, I think survive. because of that, our next mm -hmm. guest on Faith in Action is Councillor Eric Espina. Do you know? Uh, to share also yes. his uh, no, journey, no? Yes. 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 Thank you. A, thank uh, you. He's also a good person, uh, um, Councillor Eric. He's, mm -hmm. Whenever I look at him, I see how somebody who is, who is in that position, mm having -hmm. that position in the politics, in the army, mm -hmm. and being so spiritual. Mm -hmm. When he shares with us how many spiritual books he has read, he has read mm -hmm. some, someone he also gave to me to read and, uh, you know, I said, wow, this is really challenging. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And, uh, yeah mm. so I really thank, I really thank him also. Thank and I, I thank uh, mm. the father, the former governor and um, the former senator of mm. the father of Eric, father. Although, yeah. none, late. Mm. But I know he is watching us spiritually <laughs> from wherever he is. So he's also very, very nice to us. So mm. I thank him. We keep praying for him. We are celebrating mass for him every week, That's mentioning nice. his name. That yeah. God will grant him an arrest. And for all those that helped us, we promise you our prayers. Whenever we say you must, that must you participate in it. Okay. Even if mentioned or not mentioned, you mm -hmm. participate in it. Prayer is the only thing we can offer. With silver or gold, we have none, just like St. Peter says. But what we have, we will give you, we promise you our prayers. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Father Lawrence and Father Gabriel. Before we go, as we always do in our program, Tatay will say uh, uh, a prayer. Mga kaigsunan, niya naman sa napupusa sa ng atong programa. So una tamubiya din ni ng atong programa. Atong ibutang atong kagulingon sa presensya sa Gino. Sa kanan sa mga anak sa Espiritu Santo. Lord, here we are. We're going back to where our place are. This morning, we have two dedicated priests, your priest. We ask you, Lord, to protect them. They're about to go home. Do not Be allow any untoward so incident that will happen to them. And Mama Mary, they are your priest. Stay beside them always in their ministry. Protect them. Cover them always with your blue mantle of protection. Yes. They are very effective servants of yours. Use them fully 
to bring back more soul. O mga kaiksunan, kita karon nga niya sa television. If you want to be healed in your sickness, try to remember. Remember those people who have offended you. People who hurt you most. People who give you pains. Forgive them. If you want to receive the healing from the Lord, you have to release and be set free from that unforgiveness. In Matthew 6, 14 to 15, the Lord said, if you cannot forgive, the Father in heaven cannot also forgive you. Healing cannot come if you cannot forgive. Forgive them. Complete forgiveness is needed. Yes. Whoever they are, forgive them. At this moment also, try to examine your conscience. What are the wrongdoings that you have done against the will of the Lord? Ask the Lord to forgive you. Repent and be sorry for all of those things. Do not allow the healing to be blocks in coming to you. Forgive and repent. At this moment, I want to ask you also to ask forgiveness from the sins of your ancestors, the sins of your grandparents, the sins of your parents. Heal in the name of Jesus, be healed. Hallelujah, we praise you, we glorify you, we honor you. Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. At this moment, try to focus in your mind. Focus. There is a stair in front of you. That is the staircase of healing prepared by Jesus. For you and him to climb that staircase of healing. I want you to climb. Climb and reach the top. When you reach the top, I want you to have Jesus for your complete healing. Climb now. Climb step by step, side by side with Jesus. Jesus, Lord, as you climb with them, Lord, I ask you to repair what it is needed to be repaired in their body, Lord Jesus, in body organs. Jesus, rejuvenate, Lord, their immune system, Lord. Let the antibody be strong to fight any attacks in internal organs in the name of Jesus. Heal in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. Lord, we plead, Lord. Here we are, all of us, spreading you to heal them, each one of them who needs healing right now in the name of Jesus. Sickness in their body right now. In, by the authority vested in me, by the church and by the bishop, I have all the right to cast you out from them. I bind you to the foot of the cross of Jesus, and Jesus will be the one to dispose of you. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. We honor you. We bless you. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your touch. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Heal. Body, mind, and spirit be healed. Inside out be healed in the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Touch everybody. Touch everybody, Lord Jesus. Heal everybody, Lord Jesus. 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 Glory be to the Father. To the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be 
forever and ever. Amen, amen and amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen. So, salamat mga kagsunan sa kikuban ka na mo. Ayok kalimot. Sunod si Mana. Samang takna. Kuban ka na mo. Shalom. you can